The code had held true for 700 years, but Sturm's secret fear was that someday, in the final battle, the code would have no answers. He knew that if that day came, Tannis would be at his side, holding the crumbling world together. For while Sturm followed the code, Tannis lived it. Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe. Got another lore video for you guys. This one being an answer to another question I've been asked recently. Why do the Companions of the Lance follow Tannis? When he very apparently makes some pretty poor decisions as proven when he ends up betraying several of his companions for Kitiara remaining by her side for four days. He also ends up rushing into danger in Naraka to rescue Lorana, foregoing his duties as a leader in favor of those of a man. Whereas other characters such as Sturm put duty and others before himself at all moments, and Raceland tends to be the most logical thinking, a bit more like a Spock type of character to Tannis's Kirk. Though the difference is that where Kirk and Spock truly cared for each other, Tannis has nothing but hatred for Raceland. And Raceland tends to vary between disdain and amusement towards Tannis. The answer to this question is one that is different for each of the heroes of the Lance. For Sturm, it's a matter of the way he looks upon Tannis is one of hero worship, almost like a younger brother to an older one, with Sturm regarding Tannis as the living embodiment of the code by which all Salamnic knights live by. Flint looks upon Tannis as a son, Tass as one of his best friends, Gilthanus, I'd argue, doesn't really follow Tannis, but his path merely co-aligns with Tannis's, though he does so out of respect for the fact that Tannis is a fairly decent tactician, and Gilthanus is probably the most pragmatic of all the heroes of the Lance. As for Lorana, she follows Tannis out of love, Caramon out of brotherly affection, and Tika because Caramon follows Tannis. As for the Plainsmen, it's not as though they have anything better to do, so they simply follow Tannis out of friendship. Raceland offers the most succinct explanations in Dragons of Winter Night, wherein he tells Lorana that Sturm is of noble blood, member of an order whose roots go back to ancient times. Why does he obey bastard half-elf and Riverwind? He distrusts all who are not human and half who are. Yet he and Goldmoon both would follow Tannis to the abyss and back. Why? Raceland goes on to explain. Tannis listens to his feelings. He does not suppress them as does the knight, or hide them as does the plainsman. Tannis realizes that sometimes a leader must think with his heart and not his head. It's interesting how Raceland, though, does admit that he doesn't consider himself a follower of Tannis, merely that he's traveling in the same direction. This does fit with Raceland's own behavior. It doesn't fully explain why they follow him. Now, in Soulforge, it is Tannis and Flint who are kind of co-leaders. However, by the time of the Chronicles, Flint is far too ill and ailing to properly lead the team, so he's essentially abdicated in favor of Tannis. When Kitsiara was a member, back before the Chronicles, in the Soulforge novel, she followed Tannis out of affection, though she was often sneaking behind the backs of the various members of the Companions in order to make deals with various of their enemies or with agents of Tachesis, having never truly been a member in any way and being essentially the traitor in their midst. Whereas the rest of the Companions regarded Raceland as the likely traitor, in reality he was one of the more faithful members, which is a little ironic, though he's not entirely a follower of Tannis, but more companion. Now, while we might consider Tannis a bit of a poor decision maker at times, and even sometimes a poor strategist, he is, as said, a good tactician, and one who tends to think as much with his heart as he does with his head. Oftentimes, we'll try to make sure that everyone survives intact, save for maybe Raceland, whom more than once he tries to throw away to his death. Although, this is not exactly something that the rest of the companions fault Tannis for. So the answer is rather complicated, but I guess we could all acknowledge that Tannis is fairly charismatic. There's a charm about him that even we fans feel towards him. At times, we look upon his actions and say, why would anyone follow him in this situation? But the reality is, if we were there with the companions, we probably would end up wanting to follow him. Because Tannis is persuasive. He doesn't try to betray his companions. Whereas... Other men, such as Raceland, or women, such as Kitiara, might betray the team. Tannis won't, or at least for the most part he won't. He occasionally has given in to temptation, but overall he's pulled through for the team, or at least certain members, such as Lorana, Flint, Tass. So it's a complicated answer. It's a mixture of intelligence, as Tannis is one of the smarter members, and sheer force of will. 
on his part. So as you can see, the answer is complicated and varies from team member to team member. And if this video has pleased you, just as Tannis has a tendency of pleasing many of his companions, then don't feel shy about smashing that subscribe button, like your Theros, smashing Dragonlances into shape.